What's up guys, Swordsman here and I'm bringing you some more World vs. World gameplay from the Glorious Guild Wars 2 Public Beta event. I'm going to try and stay focused on this commentary, but it's going to be a struggle when you have so many awesome things to talk about in World vs. World. To try to keep focus, I'm going to start off by roughly explaining what World vs. World is to those of you that may not be familiar with Guild Wars 2 or just viewing this, uh, sort of just not knowing anything about it. Guild Wars 2 has two different types of PvP, this is one of the big ones. Uh, in a nutshell, it's three different servers competing all over the same areas of land on a, a giant set of maps. That's about it in a nutshell, there's three, three groups, three factions warring together trying to control stuff. Um, that said, it is not a, it, it's more of a marathon instead of a sprint. The structured PvP that I've put up already it's definitely more of a sprint. It's very quick. You can win easily and quickly and decisively. World vs. World is not the same. A World vs. World battle basically takes place over two weeks. It cannot be won in a day. It cannot be lost in a day. It is a collective group effort over a long period of time to see which server is going to come out on top. And that to me is fairly interesting. It's, it, it's pretty damn cool. Right now on the screen you're seeing uh, two, two sides here basically squaring off on so semi-static lines. We're trying to, uh, a bit of skirmishing going on here and there. I am playing my Guardian as usual that I played uh, throughout the beta almost exclusively. I am using the Sword in the Focus weapon set combined with a Mace and a Shield weapon set. That is primarily how I enjoy playing my Guardian. It f I feel like it offers me a good balance between offensive capabilities as well as supportive roles. And uh, it's, it's, it's a struggle to make it work completely in how I intended in my mind in World vs. World. It seems to be a very solid structured PvP build, but throughout the examples here in this video, I do think I provided a, a decent role of pr playing the Guardian as best I could. I did mosey on down the hill over into this supply point. Capturing the supply points are pretty important because without supply you can't build the siege weapons and the equipment that you need to maintain control of the world versus world zone. So I did come over there. I realized I may have bitten off a bit more than I could chew because it was just me still as I was chasing that straggler. But uh, after a vicious death, I do have a couple more friends coming with me over into this area to try and retake this uh, this. Uh, this point to get it into our enemy or our, our own team's hands from our enemies. It, uh, it it was uh, fairly straightforward. You come in. There will be some players mingling about. Most likely, there will be some NPC guards, and you just need to basically uh, exterminate everyone there, and then you move into a bed, a bit of a, like a, a domination point where you, you control the, the conquest circle and slowly convert the supply point over into your service control works fairly well it is the, these things are basically the smaller objectives they're easier to capture than say the keeps or the towers that said they, they don't need a, a battering ram or anything like that but they can be fairly tricky to do by yourself or a, a very small group because uh, whenever there's just one player or two players there combined with the relatively strong NPCs you can be pushed back if you're just a very small group but uh, luckily we had uh, myself and Athel and Jay Kaiser. I don't know if Stoneface Locke had joined us just yet in this World vs. World session. This right here is a Dalyak that, you're, that I'm killing. Uh, these things are what take supply from the supply points to the keeps that you own. And killing them is absolutely vital because you can uh, starve out your enemies, uh, their, their keeps and their towers, that way they get less and less supply to keep reinforcing the doors to, to stop them from repairing it and rebuilding it or buying upgrades and stuff for it. But we did manage to clear this out. A giant freaking chase for just one person I think it is, but I mean what are you going to do? I mean, y you have all these things dangling in front of you. You're bound to try to want it to uh, chase it after everyone you can to get the kills. I know, I know, it leads to bad habits, but damn it, it's fun. It really is. So after capturing that, I, I had moseyed on over here to this hill to overlook these, these two players that were on the enemy team, and they were down fighting some monsters around the, the water's edge. It is a ranger and an elementalist, and truthfully, I was trying to call for Jay Kaiser and Thayla to come over and gank them with me. But the ranger picked the fight, and it's just two versus one right now. I am in my sword and focus set for the moment. 
Ideally, I would have liked to have swapped to my my Mason, my shield, when he went to channel his heal to interrupt that. But, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, hindsight is always easier when you're looking back. But uh, I do think I give these guys a pretty damn good fight. Two versus one like it is for the longest time. Uh, the Elementalist there, he didn't seem to be doing too much because his, his big AoEs were largely telegraphed. And that the sort of like the elemental part hangs in the air for a moment to give you uh, a few seconds to try to dodge out of the way. And I think I did a relatively good job of getting out of the way for most of them to uh, mitigate much of the damage he was capable of doing to me. My goal here was to use the defensive nature of my guardian to last as long as possible to hope then that Jay Kaiser and Atheo could find their way over to me to help me. Uh, even up this fight and if not tip it into our favor and get the easier win against these guys. This is something that you'll find in World vs. World semi-frequently and that's just smaller skirmishes amongst uh, uh, smaller groups. It's not always going to be the big massive Zerg warfare, it's just dozens and dozens of players against uh, other dozens of players. You can roam around, you will find other people doing things. There is PvE content here, there's little uh, groups of NPC villages you can take over and kill to turn onto your ser your server's side and convince them to help you. There's all sorts of little stuff. Throughout World vs. World to begin with, you, you will be getting experience for killing people, for completing objectives, for all sorts of stuff. Now, reviving people even gives you uh, fairly nice XP. So you can level up in World vs. World. You can get gear and loot and all sorts of goodies in World vs. World. It's like a, a very awesome blend of PvP meets PvE, and it's just, it really seems to work. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if my ideal playstyle for a Guardian will be absolutely ideal for how to endure the sieges and the attacks and the defenses of the big keeps. But when it does come to these little uh, skirmishes, like here we're capturing an another supply point, my Guardian does seem to help tip the scale into our favor as I provide support to those around me. Which is uh, a pretty damn cool thing and exactly what I was hoping for with the Guardian. And as you can see, when I'm in my sword and my focus uh, weapon set, I do deal a fairly significant chunk of damage along with keeping my allies alive. There I use my little Guardian bubble to knock everybody back and uh, block some projectiles. That's pretty handy. It is kind of entertaining to use it against players as well when you send them flying. Here I believe I am quote unquote tanking one of the big NPCs of the supply camp. And, and I'm saying tanking just because he happens to be hitting me and I can pretty much endure the damage. It's not like I'm like taunting or anything to keep him on me. It just happens to be uh, he's hitting me so I'm going to hit him so that way he's not hitting somebody that's squishier like a Theo or Jay Kaiser that was up on the hill fighting as well. Uh, throughout this, we do have a bigger fight up above me. Atheo, I believe, had set up an arrow cart, which was another siege weapon. Air there, there you see the arrows raining down. They just do, they do so much AoE damage. It's, it's very quite... It, it's quite awesome to see them in action. One of the things I regret from the beta weekend is... I myself had not been able to man any of the siege weapons throughout the weekend. I was just too focused on kicking ass as best I could as my guardian itself and uh, I didn't get a chance to play with any of those. But hopefully there will be uh, much time for that next time. I do hear the trebuchets are pretty damn badass so with any luck I shall be able to man those and show you guys just how awesome they are. I know Athel set up a bunch of stuff over the weekend which was very cool seeing that in action. See the arrow cart there to my left. And uh, we, we pretty much come in here and get a fairly easy win on clearing out another supply point for our server. That was basically just a little bit of an introduction to World vs. World and how it worked. I know some of you guys were curious and asking since you don't really follow this too closely. Uh, hopefully this makes it look pretty interesting for you guys. It is definitely one of the biggest features of Guild Wars 2 that I'm looking forward to. Take care guys, I'll see you next time.